Now, y'all already know what time it is. It is time for the mess. So let's get into it, honey. What's going on, you guys? It's be your boy, Scott, by Nature TV. And we're here for a brand new episode of Yeah! Yes, for the mess. Okay. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. We are here for a super sized episode of Yes for the Mess. Yes, that is a super sized episode of Yes for the Mess because I've been very, very slow with putting out videos this week. Okay. Like my like I just said before, my aunt passed away. We just buried her on Saturday. And I spent most of my time with my family this past weekend. So I did not film as much. Then I just came back to work on Tuesday. So that's been kind of messing me up. And you know, I've been late for work every damn day and everything. So at this point, I said, you know what, let me just give them a supersized yes for the mess. I think they will appreciate it being a pretty much a supersized version of yes for the mess because we have a multitude of things to talk about okay a multitude of things um honey because i've been getting sent a lot of stuff and i've been getting sent so much stuff to the point to where i might have to do another video because this one gonna this one already long enough it's gonna be long as hell if i put most stuff in it at this point you know <laughs> but however before we even get into tonight's yes for the mess let's talk about boys night out now as you guys already know normally around this time of the day boys night out will be getting ready to premiere right well it won't be premiering on fridays for the next couple of weeks okay we will we will be on saturday nights okay temporarily on saturday nights um and we will be on saturday night at 8 30 p.m eastern time 7 30 p.m central time okay the link should be available already um on my community wall if it's not on my community wall already then you can you know, you can go to the playlist because it's already sitting in the playlist already. You can go to the playlist and you can definitely set your reminder so you could be notified when the video drops. So it includes Josiah, myself, Maddie, Jamar, and giving you the real tea, aka Terrence. The five of us will be on screen and we're going to have a, a merry old time. And also, like I said before, get ready for the boys' night out getaway. Okay, we will be vlogging us getting together. Um, in Atlanta, for me, you know, I've been around Jamar for uh, for for years at this point. So this is going to be my first time meeting Josiah in person. This will be my first time meeting Maddie in person. Josiah and Maddie have already met. Um, me and Maddie both have Jamar in common. So, of course, we both been around Jamar, but just not with each other. And if Terrence is able to go, all four of us will be hanging out with Terrence for the first time. So this is going to be epic. We will be vlogging it, okay? So um, all we got to do tomorrow after the show, we're going to be talking about the trip and everything else. So, yes, Boys Night Getaway is on the way, honey. And I hope y'all prepared for it because it's going to be a blast. Okay, so without any further ado... Let's get into what you guys are here for, which is the mess. Okay, let's talk about it. Now, we're going to start this thing off. You know, we're going to start out with something really light. You know what I mean? It ain't going to be too much. You know, we're going to give it a little light light. So, as you guys already know, um, one Real Housewife of Atlanta star, Portia Williams, her show, Portia's Family Matters, just ended on Sunday. Me, Terrence, and Josiah did our final roast and review on it. And I also joined Alex Salter TV's um, panel just last night and, and stopped by for a couple of minutes to talk about the ending of that particular show. But not only does Portia have a, well, Portia got a special, but not only did Portia have the chance to have a solo show, this time... Um, veteran Candy Burris also has a solo show, but this is not her first rodeo. Now, as you guys already know, Porsche, uh, Candy has had multiple spinoff shows at one point in time. She had, um, her very first one was the Candy Factory. Mm. The next one was, uh, Candy's Wedding. Mm. The next one was Candy's Ski Trip. I love the ski trip. I just didn't review it, but I love the ski trip. And the last one was Candy Coated Nights. Then mm -mm. I wasn't feeling that one at all. Wasn't feeling that one. However, we're here for a brand new show that goes by the name of Candy and the Gang is going to chronicle the goings and the happen and the happenings of um her restaurant in Atlanta called the OLG, which I plan to visit finally um for my birthday. Jamar said he's gonna take me. 
So I'm going to give y'all some reviews too. So if y'all want me to give y'all some reviews on the restaurant, just let me know, okay? However, um, we're going to get right on into it. Let me go off screen. And uh, we're going to talk about it now. Uh, so um, the article here, it comes from the jasminebrand.com. And then after we get into this article, I'm going to let you guys know exactly what I thought when I saw the trailer. Because I saw the trailer earlier today when I was at work, okay? So without any further ado, let's get into the article, okay? Now, Candy Burris and her family have officially landed more TV time. Now, back in 2019 and 2020... The Jasmine brand broke the story that the Bravo reality star was quietly working on a spin now focusing on her mother and aunts, a.k.a. the old lady gang in the family business, okay? Now, today, January the 21st, the news was confirmed with an official announcement of a new docuseries in the trailer. Viewers will, wa will watch as Candy, Todd, and the old lady gang compromised of, not compromised, comprised of Mama Joyce and aunts, Bertha and Nora continue to build their restaurant empire while keeping their over-the-top and opinionated staff in line, making their vision come to fruition. The new series follows the staff in and out of the restaurant, witnessing how workplace slights bleed into their social lives. Mama Joyce, oh, I'm sorry. Um, everyone at the OLG has a passion, be it for dancing and comedy or just following in Candy's mogul footsteps. Uh, and these dreams can get in the way of running food and ensuring customers don't lead those dreaded one-star Yelp reviews. And the fact that some are single and constantly flirting with the cute clientele in each other doesn't exactly help things either. It's a monumental tax to face, but if anyone can do it, it's Candy. The series is produced by True Original with um, Steven Weinstock, Glenda Hirsch, Candy, Glenda Hirsch, I'm sorry, Candy Burris, and Todd Tucker serving as executive producers. Will you watch the show? Let us know in the comments. Okay, so that's oops, I'm sorry. Um, so that was us talking about the new series, which is you know Candy Burris, Candy and the Gang. Okay, and here's what I got to say about that. Now, I was very excited about um this particular situation mainly because candy does give us entertaining spinoffs when it's involving her family and this is what i have to say when you do um a spinoff like when you come in from an ensemble cast and you do a spinoff you must ha you must have an entertaining supporting cast I always say that every time you have to have a supporting cast that's entertaining. You have to have a supporting cast that knows what they're doing. You know what I'm saying? And she, you know, she, you know, got what was needed. Okay. Candy always knows what to do. You know, Candy's family is very entertaining. They have, you know, interesting personalities. So at the end of the day, she already knew what she had to bring. Okay. So let's put it there. She knew she had to bring Mama Joyce and the aunties. There is no candy spinoff without Mama Joyce and the aunties. She knew she had to bring Don Juan. There is no candy spinoff without Don Juan. Um, she had to bring Todd. Why not? That's her husband. He has to be there. You know what I'm saying? Like, she knew what to do. So, when you got a great supporting cast, that really props you up. You know what I'm saying? So I was never worried about Candy show being boring at all. Never was the case for me. I, I knew it was going to be good. All I know is that what she really needed to bounce off of was a very entertaining um cast. That's all she really needed was a very entertaining cast or whatnot. Um, looking at the trailer, um, there is drama. The drama is hella light compared to what we just got through witnessing on Portia's Family Matters or whatnot. So it's very light compared to that. But I cannot wait to see it. Um, is it a little ghetto? Yeah, it is. Yes, it is a little bit ghetto. Is it as ghetto as Portia Family Matters? Of course not. But it's enough for me to watch it and not just be shaking my head at the situation. You know, ain't nobody throwing fists. Ain't nobody hitting nobody with no production mics. Ain't nobody doing none of that. It's just clear family drama, clear employee drama. And I feel like with this show, it's pretty much like a black version of Vanderpump Rules. Like, that's what this is coming across as to me. So I feel like... This is great for Candy. Um, it's good for them, for Bravo, to showcase a black woman um, handling business, showing her businesses and everything else. That's what I think. Um, 
Now, what I really hope is that they keep it all the way funky. Keep it all the way real. Keep it all the way real about all of the things that have happened with the restaurant. And I'm talking about the health failings. I'm talking about the uh, the text liens on the buildings or whatever. I'm talking about all of the things that come with being a business owner. I don't want them to just show who's sleeping with who, who doing this, who doing that. I want to see everything. I want to see all of the struggles that comes with running a restaurant. I want to see it all. I don't want to just see one little thing. I want to see it all, period. I want to see it all. I want to see, um, I want to see it all. Like, I just want to make sure I want her to make sure that she shows all of the struggles, um, of, of owning a business. That's pretty much what I want to see. I want to see everything. I, I want to see it all, honey. Like it won't be real. Um, it, um, it won't be, it won't be real if you don't, you know what I'm saying? So you just got to put your focus on everything. You got to show every piece of struggle because you got to let it be known that it's not always peachy cream with running the business. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what you got to do. So that's what I want to see. So I don't care what nobody say. I feel like candy show is going to be good. Okay. Um, I, I think I'm going to review it. Um, since I review Porsche show, I could damn sure review candy show. So, um, her show starts on March the 6th. That's when her show starts um, or whatnot. So I should be reviewing it. I don't know if Terrence and Josiah and I will be doing a roasting review on it. I will, you know, talk to them too about it and see how they feel about it. But as of right now, I know that I'll be reviewing it. Anything Candy Birds, I will be reviewing it at this point. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to Candy and Todd because they know how to get a bag. They know how to get a check. Like I said, Candy know what to do. These are people that she knows. She ain't got to sit up there and pluck no family members that she ain't talked to for months and try to put them on the show. Let's go to the next story. So next up is Money Long, um, K. Michelle and Shayla. Now, as you guys already know from what I know of Money Long, I don't know no damn Money Long. I know Priscilla Renee because that was the name that she went under once before. Her name was once, uh, stage name was once Priscilla Renee. She was a great songwriter. She wrote um, Don't Mind for Mary J. Blige. She wrote a couple of great songs and VSOP was one of the songs that she wrote. And VSOP is one of K. Michelle's biggest songs, one of her most memorable songs, one of her signature records, VSOP. One of my favorites by K. Michelle, if not the favorite song of mine by K. Michelle. Now, apparently she was asked a question in regards to her feelings about her song, VSOP, being given to K. Michelle and how she really felt about it. She spoke her mind during an interview about her true feelings on the song going to K. Michelle. And K. Michelle's sister Shayla was not here for the BS. So what we're going to do is we're going to get right on into it, honey. So, um... Uh, Let's see. Uh, I forget where this article comes from. So let me go ahead and read it real quick. Okay. So it's come from Hot New Hip Hop. That's where the article comes from. Okay. So we're going to read this tidbit and then we're going to dissect it, honey. Okay. So let's get right on into the article. Now, the article states that you can't seem to go anywhere without hearing money long smash hit hours and hours. The track is a staple over on TikTok, a place where songs reach the top of the charts after going viral. And although Long's name may, new, may be new to some, she's been making moves in the industry for quite a while. Recently, Long revealed that during an interview that K. Michelle's single VSOP was initially her song, but it was given to her R&B peer behind her back. Shady moves such as these allegations are, com are common in this industry, so the story was chalked up as another lost moment. However, when K. Michelle's sister saw the clip of the interview, she wasn't happy. Money shared with the host, DeAsia Robinson, that she was disappointed, but it taught her not to play anything else for anyone else in the future. K. Michelle's sister hopped in the Instagram comment section to let her voice be heard. Shayla said, no more hours and hours for me. Definitely not a fan of how she handled this. She commented, my sister killed this song. Also, she's an amazing writer and she literally writes the majority of the songs on her albums. It's so important to state facts when speaking, Miss Money. She didn't, direct, she didn't directly speak for her sister, nor has K. Michelle addressed the mention. Now, 
with that being said, um, this audio right here, it comes from the neighborhood talk. So um, I got my Bluetooth speaker ready. So we're about to play that and keep it moving. OK, so let's play it. Even with all of your recent success, we know that it has been a very, very long journey. You had another song that was set to be one of your hit singles. I was given to another artist by one of your publishers, and we know that to be K. Michelle's VSOP. Can you just describe what you felt in that moment, having to go through that? It's like, it sucks. You know what I'm saying? It's like, damn, like, you know, I'm trying to, I'm just trying to do my thing. Like, why everybody want to write your own song? Everything that has happened to me has gotten me to this place. And in the future, I just decided, like, well, I'm not going to play anything for anybody that I don't want um, to be, you know, passed around. The song went number one with her on the R&B chart. So, you know, it's a win for everybody. Okay, you know, I had to turn it off. I had to turn it off real quick because I do not want no copyrights at all had to hurry up and turn it off but yeah so that was pretty much it now let me get myself back on camera at this point in time okay so that was pretty much the story here with k michelle's sister shayla versus money long aka priscilla renee i'm gonna call her priscilla renee because i don't know no damn money long i'm sorry but however um that was pretty much just the bad situation now here's what i feel about that First of all, I'm going to say this, and I'm not being biased, but I'm going to say this. I don't care who wrote that song. I don't care who wrote it. I don't care who produced it. I don't care who did what. That song right there was made for K. Michelle. I don't care what nobody got to say about it. That song right there was made for K. Michelle. Can't nobody sing that song like K. Michelle. Can't nobody give it what K. Michelle gave. You may not agree with me when I say that, but that's just facts on facts. Can't nobody give that song what K. Michelle gave. K. Michelle gave that song what it needed to be given. Okay, I don't care what nobody say about that. I'm sorry. And y'all know I love K. Michelle. Y'all know that's my girl. Y'all know this already. If you've been following me for years now, you know that K. Michelle has been my girl since 2009. I've been following her career since 2009. If you don't know that, you crazy. You've been living under a rock because I've been following her, period. Pre-loving hip-hop. I've been a fan, okay? From what's the 901 all the way up till now, I've been a fan. So that's number one. I just feel like I could never hear nobody else sing that song but K. Michelle. That's number one. Number two, I will say this. As a songwriter myself, even though I have not written a song in over a year, as a songwriter myself, I can understand where money, love, is long is coming from, okay? She wrote a song. She thought it was going to be her song. She thought it was going to be a smash single for herself. But then somebody else decides, okay, this song ain't for you. I'm going to give it to somebody else. Okay, you know what I'm saying? So I know that I've been in situations where I've written songs for people. And instead of taking what I gave them, they decided to take my work and switch it around and switch some of my words around and just change the entire song around, but still want to give me credit for it. And I wasn't here. Like, yeah, you gave me credit, but I don't like the way you like this is my work. Yes, I gave it to you to sing, but this is my work. Like, like I understand. Like, if you ask me, can I change a word or two around? Okay, cool. But I've had people like switch the whole fucking song around, and it really made me mad. Luckily, the songs never came out, but I was so pissed. Like, I sat there, wrote a song from my heart. Okay, you at you told me about what you were going through. We were going through the same thing. I wrote the song, picked the beat song the damn demo through voice memos on my phone like i put in work for that song and i sent it to you and you decide to change my entire song you know what i'm saying so i know it's not the same exact thing that this is right here but i definitely understand what she's saying as a songwriter i think that where um shayla was pissed off at i think it was the whole when she said, I just felt like, man, go write your own songs. You know what I'm saying? That was kind of condescending, to say the least. I think it was condescending. And I think that that's why Shayla got so mad because she 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 felt like that uh, Priscilla was trying to play on her sister top. Like, K. Michelle don't write her own songs. When we all know 
that K. Michelle writes the majority of her songs. She may write some songs by herself. She may write them with a co-writer. At the end of the day, K. Michelle write the majority of all her songs by herself, period. Now, this doesn't take any well, anything away from Priscilla Renee, a.k.a. Money Long, because she's written other songs for K. Michelle. Like, she's co-written other songs for K. Michelle, especially on her third album, um, More Issues Than Vogue. I can even name the songs that I remember her co-writing. Um, let's see. It's a song called All I Got. Oh, my God. One of my top 10 favorite K. Michelle songs. It's, it was a deep cut. It's on More Issues Than Vogue. She co-wrote Time. She co-wrote Life I Chose in Memphis, which were all country records, uh, which were both country records for K. Michelle that were on the bonus edition of the album. Like She co-wrote some stuff with K. Michelle. And at one point, her and K. Michelle were friends at one point in time, too. So, you know, but luckily, K. Michelle has not acknowledge this and i'm glad she hasn't because she's in a very good place right now a good spot um hell came michelle for to be in a lifetime movie she got a lifetime show coming out she's on marriage boot camp she got an album getting ready to drop she got a single getting ready to drop next month she ain't got time to be in no drama she has enough going on i'm glad she hasn't responded to it so here's my thing at the end of the day just to close this thing out i feel like i get it on both ends i understand money's situation and how she felt and I definitely understand why Shayla may have felt that Kay was being slighted with the whole, man, go write your own songs as if her sister can't write a song by herself. You know what I'm saying? But when you bring everything full circle, it everybody won. The song was successful. You know, Priscilla still got paid. It went number one. It's one of the best songs of the 2010s. It's K. Michelle's biggest song. Everybody wins. Everybody wins. So that's how I feel about that. Um, so, uh, but you know, money was in the blogs not too long ago about a song being stolen and and and, and, and it involved Keisha Cole too. So I don't know what that was about. I, I slept on that story, but you know, it is what it is. But shout out to Money Love, honest long. I'm sorry, I'm calling her Money Love, child. This ain't ladies first. <laughs> but um, shout out to Money Long. Um, at this point, because she has been in the industry. She has been trying to get her foot wet in the industry. She has been trying to do things in the industry. So shout out to her because um, she's finally making it. Hours and Hours is a great song. Um, and at first, I really wasn't feeling it like that. But I get to under, I definitely understand why other people are really just rooting for it because it sounds good in this climate of R and B music where you got girls singing a bunch of lullaby songs all damn day. You know what I mean? So I definitely understand why everybody's rooting for her. So um, shout out to Money Love, shout out to K Michelle, shout out to Shayla for her beautiful self. Okay. Now next up is um Partisan. And um, Megan Thee Stallion. Now, as you guys already know, I reported on this previously on Yes for the Mess that there are rumors going around that Party and Megan are no longer together. Um, Megan Thee Stallion had deleted a couple of posts with her and Party on them on her Instagram, and she failed to wish Party a happy birthday. But now, Party has decided to come out and speak his piece and say, listen, y'all not going to be putting all these lies out. Me and her ain't broken up. He's, he's, he said that they ain't going nowhere. They still together. That's what Party said. So I got an article here. Where I get this article from, child? Because, uh, child, I got this article from wrapup.com. We're going to get right on into it, and we're going to move on to the next, child. So let's get right on into Party and Megan Thee Stallion. Okay? Here we go with the article. Partisan Fontaine. I hope I'm saying the name right is breaking his silence following his split from Megan Thee Stallion. Amid their reported breakup earlier this month, there was speculation about what caused them to end their relationship. One media outlet claimed it was because Megan was abusive, suggesting that she was a mean drunk who put her hands on her boyfriend. But Party is putting the rumors to rest. Taken to his Instagram story, he denied the domestic abuse allegations while blasting the false reporting. Stop this cap. Nobody putting hands on nobody. At least not in that way, he wrote. Been seeing the breakup rumors and was letting y'all imaginations run, but y'all getting too crazy. Ain't give no N-I-G-G-A-S <laughs> a story, so they made one. We really been on it double time. 
Just after the new year, the couple fueled breakup rumors after Megan cleared all of the photos um, of the couple from her Instagram. Fans also noticed that Megan didn't publicly wish her um, boyfriend happy birthday on December the 29th. Back in February 2020, the Savage rapper confirmed that they were dating. They were even in talks of marriage. I do want to marry him and he wants to marry me, Megan said during a YouTube Q&A last June. Megan has remained silent about the breakup. On Friday, she is to return with a new collaboration called Lick. Okay, so I think that's it. Okay, yeah, that's it from wrapup.com. Yeah, that's pretty much it, y'all. So that's pretty much it. Now, party said they ain't broke up. That's what party said. That's what partisan has said, you guys. Okay, don't shoot the messenger. That is what partisan said. Okay. Now, yes. Um, yes, she did delete photos. She most definitely did do that. Yes, she did not wish him no happy birthday. She did not. However, I did notice that, that they were still following each other on Instagram. You know, normally when somebody break up and they deleting photos or doing all that crazy stuff, then, you know, it's kind of like, okay, you know, girl, whatever, you know, whatever, go, you know. Mm -hmm. But then they don't follow each other no more and all the other stuff. So it's kind of like, okay, you know, it's like, girl, you know, whatever it is, what it is. They done broke up. Now I need to get my turn. I like Party and Megan together, like for real. I like them together. I don't know about y'all, but I like them together. Like they are a sexy couple to me. First of all, I'm not even into women at all. I'm not into women, period. But Megan is fine as hell to me. Okay, she got that body that I would probably want, want, not want for myself, but she got that type of body that I would probably be looking at if I was into women and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Um, she got that chocolate ass skin that I like. You know, she looks like she just smells like cotton candy. Like she just smells like she smells so sweet and everything else. You know, she just looks like she smells so sweet. Like she smells so good. You know what I'm saying? Like, ooh, she make me feel some type of way on the inside. Like, you know, body, yada, 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 yada. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's how she make me feel on the inside sometimes. So, yes, Megan is fine as hell, okay? Like, straight up fine as hell. Like, she's a stallion. Like, she she just got it all naturally. Like, bruh. You know what I'm saying? However, party, fine as hell, okay? He just look like he got some good meat. Like, he just look like he know how to put it down. Like, you know how Brandy said on her song, if you put it down right, like the way I want it, play your cards right, maybe we can fall in love. Ooh, that's what I think he be doing to Megan. Like, you know, ooh, you're talking, you're so tough, seeing I love it all, even the way you flex. That's what turned me on. Oh, ooh, then she said, you know, you make me weak. Oh, I know she be, I know he be making Megan weak. I just know it. I just, just feel like they just have exotic sex. Like, this is what I think. Like, I feel like they have sex on the beach all the time. Like, this is what I get from them. They're just a sexy couple. They just, ooh, sex appeal to me. Like, they do. And I love the way that party supports her. You know what I mean? Like, he supports her up and down, for real, for real. So, I enjoy the way he supports her, like, straight up. I do. And um, it would be sad to see them break up, because like I said, I adore them together. I really do. I like them together. I think that they're, they are they are a great couple. I think that they are, a, like, a sexy couple. I think that they are something that we need to see. They're not problematic either. Like, they are great to look at as well. So, you know, you know to be honest, like, I'm glad that he shut the rumors down, but it does still look kind of suspect that she just up and deleted photos. You know what I mean? She deleted photos. She didn't tell you happy birthday publicly like she probably would have. So something had to go down. Something must be going on. We don't know what it is, but something is going on. Something. You may not know what it is, but it's something. Okay? Something. Ooh, child. Like, But, you know, I don't really like to be... Um, Hold on, you guys. Let me wait a minute. Um, but yeah, what was I going to say? But yeah, so that's just what it is with that situation. Um, you know, I'm glad that he shut the rooms down. But like I said, it did look like it was something going on. It did. So if y'all ain't broke up, why did she, you know what I'm saying? Why? 
why did she sit up and delete the photos? You know what I'm saying? Like, that's all I'm saying. Like, why she delete the photos? Why, um, why did she do that? Why did she feel the need to do that? Was she mad at you? You know what I'm saying? Like, why did she feel the need to delete the photos? You know what I'm saying? That's all I'm saying, bruh. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's pretty much, that's pretty much all I got to say about it because it just, it just seemed really weird that she did that. You know what I'm saying? So, however, y'all, to each is own, okay? To each is own with this situation. So, we're about to move on to the next thing because, y'all, listen, I had to get another picture because there was one story that I totally forgot that I was doing. And um, I know that was going to be ghetto if I had a picture of every other story, but not this one, okay? Well, not the one after this one. However, I've got the picture, so don't worry. I got you. I got you. Like I told y'all, this is a super size yes for the mess. So we're going to be up here for just a maybe another 10, 15 minutes. That's what I'm predicting. Okay, so next up is Wendy Williams' child. Now, y'all know that Wendy Williams has been going through. She's been going through, okay? And people have been telling her, business and people don't want her to come back to her show you know what i'm saying like people really been telling her business and just putting her on blast okay first of all she's sick we all know that she's sick and um it's like you know it is what it is like we don't know when she's coming back um people are taking a liking to sherry shepherd hosting her show and all kinds of stuff so it's just like girl what's going on then we find out news about her like playing with herself you know, being without no clothes on, something that we don't want to see. She already shaped like a pea. You know what I'm saying? Like all that type of stuff. But now um, there's people out there that says they work with her and there are sources for her that says that there's a lot of truth in regards to her health. Okay. So we're about to get into this story right now. Okay. So let's talk about it. And this article comes from page six. Okay. Did I, did I have to say where the article came from from the last story? I hope I did. At least I think I did. Okay. However, this article comes from page six. So it says, um, Wendy Williams sources say that there is all, there is some truth to all the claims that have been surrounding the popular talk show, talk show host health. There's a lot of truth to the stories that you are hearing about Wendy. Hold up. There's truth to a lot of the stories that you are hearing about Wendy that are true and they are coming straight from the staff, a source told page six. Several dates for the 57 year old Williams to return to her purple chair had been announced by uh, production by the, her production company, but her absence continued continues due to several health issues. The flamboyant media personality has been seen wearing a Versace robe, socks in socks, leaving a doctor's appointment. The source alleged is one thing to see what we have what we have seen in the studio, but it's another thing when certain staff members make it to her home when the when the cameras and mics are off and the liquor comes out. However, a rep for Williams insists that the stories about her health are inaccurate and dismiss rumors that she would never return to the show as speculation. According to sources that have spoken to the sun, the spark is gone. The Wendy who for 10 years had that spark in her eyes, that cheeky grin and that little wink is not the same now. She's not always functioning like she used to be. She has days where she needs help eating, getting out the bed and getting dressed. The son also asked that Williams is having problems recognizing people whom she has previously worked closely with, and there are days where she has no idea of who they are. The first source also claimed that the remaining staff speak amongst themselves, but a lot of the stories going around do have some truth to them. A lot of the staff have already left, so the ones who remain do not feel like they still have loyalty to Wendy. For what? She's not getting better, and she's not coming back, so it's whatever. They wish her the best. But these are tough times and people still need their paychecks. Stars including Leah Remini, Michael Rappaport, Michelle um, Visage, and viewer favorite Sherry Shepard have been filling in for Wendy. Announcements giving updates on Williams have been posted on the show's website. However, a second source close to Williams' family also stated that fans shouldn't expect a video, shouldn't expect a video address from the host, at least for now. Her rep, Howard Bragman, told Page Six the health issues are inaccurate and any speculation about her not returning to the show is just that, speculation. Mm, 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 mm. We don't know what to believe at this point, child. Okay, we really don't know. So that was the article from Page Six talking about the situation with Wendy Williams. Child, listen, at this point, we really don't know. 
We really don't know what's going on with Wendy. Um, we really don't know what's true and what's not. You know what I'm saying? So we really don't know how sick she is. Like I, like we keep on hearing, like we keep on hearing that she's real sick. We keep on hearing that she's not doing good. We keep on hearing that she may not return to the show. We really don't know at this point. We just don't. Um, and I feel bad that we don't know, but like at this point, Wendy is older. And it's like this, like if she needs to sit down for a while, then let her sit down for a while. Like, that's just what I think. I think that she should go ahead, sit down for a while, you know, do her thug thizzle at home, let the other girls host the show until she really gets better. But if it's to the point to where it doesn't look like she can do that show no more, girl, just sit at home, retire, collect your checks and keep it moving. Like we got to stop um, risking our health for stuff. You know what I mean? Like sometimes we got to put ourselves first and you know, and it's funny that I'm saying it, but I got to learn that too, because like, as of right now, as I'm doing this video, I am completely mentally exhausted, period, mentally exhausted, just buried a family member. And once I got done burying a family member, I had to go right back to work. Like nothing happened. And when I say go right back to work, I had to go back to my nine to five and come back here. And even though I came back here, I still was very slow at coming back here, which is why y'all got this long ass video. Now, mentally exhausted. Sometimes we have to take care of our own mental health and take care of ourselves for once before we sit up here and try to, you know, abide by everybody else's rules. That's just how I feel. Um, so child i just wish wendy the best but i don't want her to worry herself silly about this tv show you know what i'm saying worry yourself silly about your health that's what's more important period that's really all i got to say y'all know i don't really be having that much sympathy for uh wendy at all but in, at this particular point i got you i got you girl i got you so um next up is Nicki minaj okay now as you guys already know jennifer huff you know, I was watching um, Jamie's video earlier, so she said the name right. <laughs> she said the name com com correctly. Jennifer Huff um, recently um, canceled her um, lawsuit against Nicki Minaj. Now, once she dismissed her own lawsuit, everybody started to believe that Jennifer Huff is dismissing it for another reason because she was lying about the situation. Now, me personally, I never said she was lying, but I did have questions. Now... What if she's canceling the 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 lawsuit because of the fact that um she don't have the type of money that Nicki Minaj has to keep on paying for this trial? Like, what if that's the case? What if um it's it's for other reasons? Does that necessarily mean that she lied about Nicki harassing her? Does that really mean that? We don't know. You know, we really don't know. But as of right now, as of recently. They say that the harassment case hits another plot twist as the accuser, Jennifer Huff, moves on to California. So now the case has been refiled in California. It's moved from New York to California. So the case is still pending. So for those of us who had any doubt or any questions, child, Jennifer said, let me know, let me know that's what she said now that's what she said so we finna move on to this article that i got from hip-hop dx okay so we about to um read this article then we're gonna talk about it child so let's get into it now after jennifer huff voluntarily dismissed her harassment lawsuit against Nicki minaj in new york on january the 12th huff has recently refiled to move the suit to california where Nikki and her husband kenneth zoo petty call home according to the rolling stone huff's attorneys um explained the reasoning behind the move to california federal court during a manhattan court hearing on thursday january the 20th her team feels that the ruling would be more appropriate in the rap star's current home state huff originally sued minaj and her husband in 2021 for harassment claiming that they attempted to extort her into recanting her statements about Kenneth Petty allegedly R ring her in 1994 Petty served four years after being convicted of an attempted R of a 16 year old in 1995 Huff's lawyer Tyrone Blackburn added that the jur jurisdiction change will allow them to file with a different cause of action and another defendant could be in play. As usual, they have decided to adopt a tactic without bothering to research the law. Minaj's attorney, Ju uh, Judd um, Burstein, responded to the relocation. Had they done so, they would realize that a refiling, they're refiling their frivolous uh, frivolous 
action into another jurisdiction will only result in another court sanctioning them. Blackburn also warned Nicki Minaj that she should make sure to be careful with the billing hours from her legal team as he feels that they've made moves to, to just continue to add up hours in court without a real goal in mind. If I were Miss Mirage, I would pay close attention to the bill she receives from her counsel, he said. From the beginning of the lawsuit, he has engaged in a billing exercise proposing to file um, a countless number of frivolous, I know I'm saying that word wrong, sanctions, none of which were filed and none of which ha has any merit. I look forward to receiving this latest edition of her council's building exercise carefully framed as a sanctions motion. Petty is also awaiting a sentencing after pleading guilty for failing to register as a SEX offender in 2021 when moving in with Nicki Minaj while trading NYC for California Sunshine. He's expected to be sentenced for the latest charge in March, where he'll face a maximum of 10 years behind bars. So that was the article from Hip Hop DX. Okay, now it's time for my opinion. I don't know where we're going with this. I don't know how much longer we got to deal with this, but I'm tired. I'm so 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 tired. I just don't know at this point. I don't know. But like I said before, like Nikki put herself in this situation. She put herself in this situation. First of all, she put herself in it when she decided to marry a man with a background like that. That's number one. She put herself in it when she decided to speak up for this man when she wasn't even around when this even happened. You know, she could have just shut up. Like, it's bad enough that when she got with him, her fans dug him up and got some information about him. Now it's all over the place. And now he's looked at as this person. You know what I'm saying? So you don't really have nobody else but yourself to blame for this. And everybody's looking at you sideways because, number one, your brother was already arrested on some charges similar to what Kenny was arrested with years ago. And now here he goes. He knows that he was charged with this. So why wouldn't he just go on and register as an offender? Like, that's all I'm saying. Like, you you, you know what you were um, convicted for. So why not just go ahead and do what the law told you to do? You did your time for it already. Go and register as an essay offender. Period. That's what you're supposed to do in this situation. But instead, you decided not to because you thought that because you married to Nicki Minaj that nothing was going to happen to you. But it does. The law doesn't stop because you're married to Nicki Minaj. I'm just being real. It just doesn't stop. Like, just stop trying to act like it does because it don't. Period. It don't stop. Period. It just doesn't. And you just got to deal with it and move on. Like, period. Like, I just think that it's crazy that you that he really thought that he that he could get away with that. Like, straight up. It's not. No. That's that's just not it. Like, that's not it, sis. Like, that's not the way you go. That's not the route you go. That's not the route you take. You don't do that. Period. You just don't. You just don't. I, I don't see what, why he thought that was cool. But I don't know where this is going to go because she dismissed the case in New York only to refile it in, in California. I don't know what that's going to do, but okay, girl. So, uh, good luck to you, Jennifer Huff. That's all I can say. Like, Mary J. Blige, do 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 Okay? Period. Period, 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 period. Okay. Um, so next up is Cardi B and Tasha K. Now you guys already know that this has been a hot topic as of late. Everybody been talking about it. It's been everybody been making video after video about it. I really ain't talked about it like that. And that's only because of the fact that I've been I've been in mourning. So a lot of this stuff was going on. Um a lot of stuff was going on while I was grieving, so um, I didn't get a chance to touch on it. I even made a damn thumbnail to talk about this situation, but y'all, I never got the chance to, so here we are now. So you already know that it's a defamation case with Cardi B and Tasha K. You already know they've been fighting tooth and nail. There's been a lot of things revealed, a lot of people thrown on the bus, all types of stuff. It's a lot going on right now with this case. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the source.com. That's one of the um, blogs that's um, posting about it. It's the source.com. We're going to read it and dissect it and then move on to the last topic of the night child i cannot believe i'm giving y'all this long ass video but child this is the this this is what i needed to do for y'all so let's get into it so here we go um 
Cardi B is preparing for a second week of courtroom action against YouTube vlogger Tasha K. Speaking on the witness stand last week, Cardi claimed that the rumor spread by Tasha K impacted her mental health and she felt extremely suicidal. The WAP rapper went on to detail how she never felt suicidal prior to the vlogger's allegations. Cardi admitted to not feeling worthy of having a family and performing her wifely duties. I felt defeated and depressed and I didn't want to sleep with my husband. Cardi added, and I didn't deserve my kids. She alleged the rumors also caused her to experience fatigue, weight loss, and migraines, okay? According to court documents, the YouTuber claimed that the Bronx native has, has H-E-R-P-E-S, used a beer bottle as a S-E-X toy when she was a stripper and worked as a prostitute and abused coke. Tasha um, testified earlier this week and told the court that she spread lies about Cardi to make money for her business. The trial began last Monday and expected and is expected to wrap up sometime this week. If you know anybody with mental that, that, that you know need mental health, text strength to the crisis text hotline 741-741 to be connected to a certified crisis counselor. Okay, so that was pretty much it uh, for this article on um, Cardi B and Tasha K. Now, here's what I got to say about it now. Y'all know that I like Tasha K. Y'all know that I'm a fan of her work. Y'all know that I don't always agree with her. And y'all know that she recently reached out to me for an interview. So I'm just going to make that disclaimer right now to say this. Um, um, When she said that she makes up lies to grow her business. That's one of the things with her that I just don't agree with. I can't fathom making up something about somebody just to get money. You know what I'm saying? It's just not in me to do that. So, you know what I mean? And I've been in the place where Cardi B has been. Like she said, she was suicidal based off things that people were saying about her. And I'm just going to take this as a transparent moment to say, we talk about YouTube comments and we talk about comments on other platforms and stuff like that. And we, people always tell us that we need to have thicker skin and we need to do this and we need to do that. And that is true. We should have thicker skin. But at the end of the day, I'm not a celebrity. I'm a regular person. I work a nine to five job. I work at fucking Kroger. Okay. <laughs> 40 hours of the week. Okay. Okay. And I do this part time, well, full time, just as much as I do Kroger. So I'm just a regular person and I'm a regular person that's not used to being criticized for the smallest things. Like I remember I've gotten a little bit better with the scrutiny because I've been doing this for a long time. I've gotten a little bit better, but I'm just going to be transparent here. I did not like it when people would make up stuff about me. Um, I remember when I was friends with with a particular blogger, people was calling me a kiss ass and saying all this crazy stuff about our relationship. And it would really hurt my feelings because I pride myself on not being that type of person. And I never want to be seen as that type of person because I'm way too strong, way too opinionated, way too this and that to ever be somebody's puppet. And that's the way I was being portrayed as being this person's puppet being, you know, begging for their friendship, wanting to be up under them, you know, all of this other stuff, which was not facts at all, but that's what was being said. Um, I didn't like how people would criticize me for um, my teeth being messed up. It would hurt me when people would say that. Um, when people would call me, um, it was one comment, somebody called me um, Lil Sickle Cell or something like that. That hurt my feelings one time. Or it was something where uh, someone said that I look sick. I look malnutrition. Um, I look like I got AIDS and all this other stuff. And it was just ridiculous. So it was like, you know, things can hurt. Things that people put out there can hurt. Now, as I grow in this business and as I continue to do what I'm doing, I also had to take into account that I say stuff about people that's not so nice. Like a lot of these celebrities that I talk about, I say stuff about them that's not so nice. I call them names that wasn't so nice. So who am I to sit up here and get upset about what somebody's saying about me when I'm doing it to somebody else who may not never even meet me? But I had to take that into account. I had to take that into account and I had to take accountability. I'm sitting up here getting, I'm sitting up here 
you know, damn near about to cry about what a group of people saying about me. But then I wonder what people do when they watch my videos and they see what I think about them. You know what I'm saying? So I felt Cardi B on that situation. Um, so I would never agree. As much as I like Tasha and what she does and her work, I would never agree with that particular situation. I would never agree with anything. And I've always been the type of person that never felt like, you know, when I give out the news, I just repeat what's in the blogs. You know, I repeat what's in the news and I just get my own spin on it. Like I don't have nobody giving, I don't have no sources. I don't have nobody feeding me no information or nothing like that. I don't have none of that. All I got is the blogs. And if the blogs ain't saying it, I don't know nothing about it. You know what I'm saying? So it is what it is. So from the looks of it, this case is really not looking too good for Tasha. And um, it's looking like it's going into Cardi B's favor at this point. And, you know, it's been countless and countless of videos being made about it at this point. And I really haven't followed the story as much like that. But, uh, yeah, this is all I could talk about right now because I haven't really followed the story like that. Only because I was grieving. But, um. I'm going to follow it some more and um, I'm going to give more of an opinion once I follow more of the story. But yeah, that, 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 yeah, that, that was a, I feel like that's going to be a huge blow to her case if it's not already a huge blow already. And side note, um, since we talked about Tasha K, we all have witnessed the breakdown of the relationship between Tasha K and Storm Monroe. And I find that to be very unfortunate that they've fallen out. I really hate to see youtube relationships or youtube friendships or youtube mentorships fall apart like that like i wasn't i didn't like it when i saw wiley fall out with tasha k i thought that was crazy um i hated that um because he was really you know wiley doing his thing you know he's been doing his thing lately you know what i'm saying you know what i'm saying like i've always been a supporter of him you know what i'm saying so he's been doing his thing so when he kind of missed lost out on the mentorship or, or wherever they at now because i don't know if he really lost it but you know you know i talked about it on my channel um, it just, I just, my God damn, like he, he was coming out of another situation and he was about to grow into another situation. You know what I'm saying? So now we're looking like this. So then her and Storm falling out and we all know that Tasha mentored him. She helped him get to where he is and all of that other great stuff. And it's all this stuff that's going on surrounding that is really crazy. And I hate that that happens. And it just further lets, makes people believe that us bloggers can't get along and we can, but shit happens. Everything ain't going to always be peachy cream, but I hate that it's really going come down to this, though. I don't like that it's come down to this at all, but, you know, prayers go out to both, to, 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 to every situation involved with the Cardi B and Tasha case, the Cardi B and Storm case, the Chelsea Storm, Bun, all that crazy stuff that's been going on. Shout out to Conscious TV for keeping everybody ablaze to the situation. Yes, indeed. So we're going to go ahead into the last topic of the night and that is Jeannie from Salt Lake City okay now you know earlier this week we talked about her offensive posts uh, her, offense, her offensive post or whatever that she posted now apparently she didn't gave us an apology and some of her cast members have spoken up on social media but Bravo has not okay so we're about to get into this particular article from people.com this is going to be the last one you guys so let's talk about it Jeannie is owning up to her past mistakes. The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City star, age 44, issued an apology on Instagram on Wednesday after her old um, Facebook post of hers allegedly resurfaced, some of which criticized the Black Lives Matter movement. The nationwide protest riots following the death of George Floyd and more, according to page six. I want to acknowledge and apologize for my deleted post. From my deleted Facebook post from 2020 that's resurfaced today, she began her statement with, which she captioned, hate is a virus. At the time, I thought I was speaking out against violence, but I have since learned how offensive and hurtful my words were. It's why I deactivated that account more than a year ago and why I continue to try and learn about perspectives different from my own. I regret these posts and I am sincerely sorry for the pain that they caused. People's request for comment from Bravo was not immediately returned. Uh, Jeannie's public apology comes shortly after she expressed her frustration with Real Housewives of Salt Lake City cast member Mary Cosby for saying she left her slanted eyes during the show's January 2nd episode, okay? So that's pretty much it for the article because I don't have to read nothing else. So let me come back on camera 
just to say this. Jeannie, we don't, I'm not back on camera. Jeannie, we don't want your apology. We good on you and your damn apology. We don't need it. We already knew that you was going to come out with an apology, but you said what you said and you meant what you said. So stand in it. Don't wait till you get drugged for, for an apology. Don't wait because you didn't care about none of that when you were saying what you were saying. Period. You didn't care about any of that when you said what you said. You knew what you said. You knew what you did and all of that stuff. So you can keep it moving with your BS. Keep it moving. We don't want your apology. We don't need your apology. And what's crazy to me is that Bravo ain't saying nothing about what's going on with Jeannie. Bravo ain't saying nothing. Period. But quick to put up something about we don't condone violence on this network. But you ain't said, you ain't made not one statement about Jeannie. We gonna see. We're about to go back off um, screen right quick because people have responded. So let's put them on the screen, child. So the real Jen Shaw, she said, I really believe what I see in here online. And I know firsthand what it feels like to be judged without evidence or an admission of guilt. However, since my Salt Lake City cast member has admitted that she made those horrible comments and posts, I must now stand up on behalf of my husband and sons who are African-American to say that I am deeply offended by the racially insensitive posts and comments. It was infuriating to see her like and repost comments that made a mockery and showed complete apathy towards those killed marching to bring awareness to deep-seated social issues that plague our country. I am equally disappointed by the disingenuous apology that was issued. Needless to say, we have some real shit to talk about. Period. You better say that, Jen. Very disingenuous. Very. Because she don't mean nothing that she's saying in that apology. She ain't sorry. Don't tell me you're sorry because you're not. Jeannie, when I know you're only sorry you got caught, period, okay? Now, apparently, um, Real Housewives of Dallas star Tiffany Moon has unfollowed Jeannie, and so has Crystal from Real Housewives of Beverly Hills um, unfollowed uh, Jeannie. Next up is Whitney. Recent events have reminded me that the importance of always leading with love, light, kindness, it is never okay to blatantly make, comment, post, or share any type of racially charged or derogatory statements slash posts. Like everyone else, I was shocked and saddened at the things that have surfaced online. There is so much deep-seated discrimination and racism rooted in our country, and we all need to do better and work together to make a change. I believe that everyone, no matter their ethnicity, ethnicity beliefs, sexuality, or gender identity should be treated and afforded with the same love and kindness and respect, Whitney Rose. Yes, when Whitney. Yes, okay. Meredith, she says, please use your voice to speak out against what is wrong and amplify those that are not being heard. There is no room in this world for hatred. We are all human beings and deserve the same treatment of respect and dignity. Negative commentary rooted in prejudice regarding one's race, ethnicity, religion, sexuality. Or gender is vow should never be tolerated. Educate if it comes with a lack of knowledge and condemn if it comes from a place of hatred. I pray to see this world without prejudice. Okay. Pretty PG, PC, but okay. Now, Queens of Bravo said that allegedly Jean Shaw is saying that she is not returning to the Housewives of Salt Lake City for speaking out against Jeannie. So I guess there is a um, tweet. Um, saying, Jen, are you coming back next season? I see Bravo is casting more Salt Lake City wives. Jeannie said, I was until I posted tonight regarding Jeannie's anti-Black Lives Matter post. Oop. So someone said, here's what I'm hearing about Salt Lake City. No one's been fired. Jen is actively filming season three and the cast is taking the Jeannie post very seriously. We will see it addressed on the show in season three and likely sooner. The only person not filming is Mary who effectively quit. Okay, so that's pretty much it for Jeannie and her BS. Like I said, and I don't got to say no more. Jeannie can go to hell with her fake ass apology. Because like I said, the last time we discussed this, we don't need her apology. I don't need it. What a Lord said on all, all cried out, apology not accepted. It's not accepted. We don't need it. We don't want it. We good on you, period. We good on you. Bravo, you need to let her go. You need to let her go. Because at this point, y'all keep on enabling these problematic ass people. First, now, 
First off, you did let Phaedra go for drug for, for talking about for making up rumors about somebody getting, you know, assaulted and all this other stuff. You did one good thing by that, but you kept Portia, who perpetuated the lie. Okay, never understood that either. Um, but then you got this woman right here with these racist posts and all this other stuff being offensive. Y'all need to do something about that too. Let's 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 really do something about it. Let's really do something about it. That's all I'm saying. So you know, let her go. She cannot be here. We need to let her go. But with that being said, you guys, this be your boy, Scotty by Nature. Be sure to like, rate, comment, subscribe, and share this video. Also, click the notification bell so you can be notified whenever I drop a video. Also, follow me on social media. My Twitter and my IG will be down below. I do follow back on IG, so if you want me to follow you back, all you got to do is hit me up in the DMs on IG, and I will definitely follow you back. Y'all, this is an hour long. I've never done a video an hour long unless it was live. With that being said, you guys, you boys out of here until my next video. I'll holler at you later. Peace out.